Herbs and hydroponics have gone together for a long time, but bring fish into the equation and heads start to turn. Don Grant and Yoka de Hauer of Tasman Bay Herbs did just that when they heard they could get the nutrient-rich water they needed by letting grass carp have first crack at it. Auckland entrepreneur Ashley Berrysmith was the backer they needed. Staying with them one night uh, down, in, down in this wonderful place down in Rewaka and we talked about aquaponics and Don said, I've been thinking about that for years. So that's how it happened. And like all good plans, this one came together at the pub. Ashley told me how excited he was about this new project and I said, what is it? And he said, aquaponics. And I said, yeah, I know a little bit about aquaponics. And his eyes lit up and he said, wow, really? I said, yeah, you know. The theory goes that the fish produce ammonia, which can be converted to a nitrate and fed to the plants, bypassing the usual hydroponic method of fortifying water with chemicals. Australian scientist Dr Wilson Leonard is one of the few aquaponics experts retrofitting hydroponic systems with fish tanks. And basically those nutrients the fish produce as a waste are a perfect nutrient for the plants to grow on. So the fish live in this area in here and we've got a couple of filtration processes which I can run you through and then the water goes outside and the plants use that waste as a food and they clean it out of the water and then the water returns back into the fish and it's a perpetual cycle. The science of aquaponics is no secret, but the specifics are. We can't show you how many fish are in these tanks or how much they're fed. In fact, the only person who does know is the man in charge. And the whole thing's about how many fish you have to how many plants, and I've just honed in on that area and developed a specific model and a management approach to look after that. The trial started in October and hasn't been without its problems. Ironically enough, it turns out grass carp, a native of Siberia, don't like the cold. And as the winter weather cools the system down, the fish are losing their appetite. Quite simply, the fish have stopped eating because the fish themselves, when they get below 15 degrees, um, these particular fish, they just they, they don't like to eat and they become very, very efficient because they're cold-blooded and so they don't need food for three months. So because they don't need food, they're not eating, they're not producing the nutrient. And because of that, the herbs aren't grown. And the results are plain to see. Take a look at this five-week-old coriander grown hydroponically and compare it to a crop planted the same day and since fed by fish. Luckily, the problem's easy enough to fix. And when it is, countries that are big on population but short on water should be presented with an uber-efficient version of market gardening. So I think it has its best applications in places like Australia, west coast of USA, which is very dry, um, the Middle East, which is very dry, and the dry areas around the Sahara in Africa. Nine months into the trial, Don and Yoka couldn't keep the public at bay any longer. We're just allowing people to come around and have a look. We guide them through our greenhouse, show them how we grow hydroponically. We find a lot of people find it really, really interesting to get a look behind the scenes. Fingers crossed, investor interest is just as strong. Michael Wright, Country 99 TV News.